Hello and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. After surviving an illness I was sure was going to take me out permanently, I finally finished reading Priest's Guardian. Two weeks later than I originally intended, but I did finish reading it. So the first volume of the series was released, I believe it was back in late August, but I wasn't able to fit it into my reading list until early October. Now I intended to read it within the first week of the month, but that got derailed because I got sick like I mentioned, and I only just finished it recently. So before I talk about it some more, let's do a quick read through of the synopsis on the back of the book. Investigations in the Dark Zhao Yunlan heads up a cover division of the Ministry of Public Security that deals with the strange and unusual, blurring the line between the mortal realm and the netherworld. His cocky, casual attitude conceals a sharp mind and an arsenal of mystical tools and arcane knowledge. While investigating a gruesome death at a local university, Zhao Yunlan crosses paths with the reserved professor Shan Wei. Zhao Yunlan is immediately intrigued by Shan Wei's good looks and intense gaze, and the attraction between them is immediate and powerful even as Shan Wei tries to keep his distance. Shan Wei and his secrets are a puzzle Zhao Yunlan feels compelled to solve as mysterious circumstances throw them together and their connection becomes impossible to deny. So most of the synopsis focuses on the relationship between Zhao Yunlan and Shan Wei, but there is so much more to this volume that made it an overall enjoyable read. The book starts out with a short prelude that introduces a character called Guo Chang Chang, who is basically a nepo baby, except he's like the most precious nepo baby who I actually found to be quite an endearing character. And in this prelude, he has gotten an acceptance letter to become the newest hire in the Special Investigations Department led by Zhao Yunlan, who is one of the main characters. Zhao Yunlan is this being known as the Guardian, the title of the series who is also the leader of the Soul Guardian Order and is responsible for overseeing supernatural matters in the mortal realm. Now this is a Dame novel and they do have a penchant for unreasonably attractive characters, so I want to read out the scene of his character's introduction. Here it goes. A young man walked out of Four Bright Avenue's little garden with long strides. There was a cigarette in his mouth and his hands were shoved in his pants pockets. He was tall with upright shoulders, thick brows, deep-set eyes, and a defined nose. He was very handsome, even if his expression was a little dark. In a stroke of misfortune, Guo Chang Chang happened to meet his gaze and was immediately terrified by those black eyes. Beautiful, yet cold, his instinct told him that this hot guy had a bad temper. But when the hot-tempered hottie realized who Guo Chang Chang was, he suddenly braked. In the next moment, his expression transformed, fluid as that of a master actor. That thunderous look was abruptly one of sunshine and open skies, with a kind smile that spread naturally across his face, faster than one could turn a page. Along with that smile, two shallow dimples appeared in his streaks like, seriously, he wasn't already attractive enough, you just had to give him dimples. The secret still in his mouth made the corners of his lips seem a bit crooked, and with his eyes crinkled a little, he seemed as if he might be up to no good, but just the right amount of no good, which lent him an approachable air. And I just have a note here, because I annotate that we get it. He is an irresistibly hot bastard. This description already tells you everything you need to know about this character's personality. He's hot and he knows it. He also wields that knowledge in an arrogant way that's more lovable than it is assholy, and that's a hard thing to do, so I'll give him props for that. Bo Chong Chong gets hired after going through an orientation that can possibly pass for the fastest case of instant regret where he realizes most of his co-workers are ghosts, and this is sadly not the end of his series of unfortunate events. The very first day he reports for work, a murder occurs and the victim is a college student, but this is not just any murder. It's one that requires his department to get involved, so it is a supernatural case. And when the murder is reported, there aren't a lot of people available to support the case, so it falls into the hands of Guo Chong Chong, the new hire, his boss, Zhao Yunlan, and his boss's sidekick, an incredibly fat cat called Da Qing that is mentioned throughout the series. They head out to investigate and it leads them to the victim's college where our second main character is a professor and this is how he and Zhao Yunlan encounter each other for the first time. And since I read out the introduction for Zhao Yunlan, I'll do the same for the professor Shan Wei as well and this scene is both his introduction as a character as well as his first meeting with Zhao Yunlan. I'll start by reading um, his first meeting with Zhao Yunlan. He turned to the man in glasses, he being Zhao Yunlan, and extended a hand. Hello, we're from public security. The last name's Zhao, and with whom do I have the honor of speaking? Their gazes met and they both froze. Out of nowhere, is he an instructor or the school hottie flashed across Zhao Yunlan's mind? 
Something flickered over the hot instructor's face. He seemed to instinctively avoid Zhao Yunlan's hand, but quickly recovered. Clearing his throat, he touched his hand to Zhao Yunlan's for the merest fleeting instant before letting go. The honor is all mine. The name is Shun, Shun Wei. So this is just their meeting, but further down on this page, Shun Wei's appearance is described from Zhao Yunlan's perspective. The world held all kinds of beauties. Sunny, refreshing, dashing, delicate, the possibilities were endless. But there was one type, like fine porcelain, that at first glance seemed pleasant enough to look at, but not entrancing. That almost sounds like an insult, but keep reading. Such gentle, elegant beauty didn't brashly demand attention, but someone with a discerning eye would be drawn in, captivated by the exquisiteness before them. That was the nature of Shan Wei's appearance. The longer you looked, the more his beauty was revealed. This is incredibly descriptive, or at least I think so. I like how the author has kind of made their physical descriptions also match their personalities. Sean Wei has a very reserved and calm personality that doesn't really demand attention, but it draws you in slowly, which is also how his appearance has been described. Yun Lan and Chong Chong carry on with their investigation, and Sean Wei helps them with getting around the university since he's more familiar with the layout. And they all come into contact with another student called Li Xian, who becomes a person of interest in the case. Turns out that this student witnessed the murder they're investigating, but she also unknowingly played a part in kind of summoning the ghost that killed the victim. See, she, uh, I almost said Shilian. Li Xian had found a family heirloom called a reincarnation Dao, and just like it sounds, it possesses the power to reincarnate someone on the verge of passing over to the spirit realm by taking some of the caster's life. She tried to use the Dao and ended up triggering a prison break in the netherworld that unleashed ghosts on the mortal realm, one of them being the one that killed the student whose murder case is being investigated in the better part of the book. And as Zhao Yunlan digs into the case, he starts having these weird interactions with Shan Wei that were mostly his own doing because he was relentlessly and shamelessly pursuing the other man, but they also start to reveal deeper ties between the two of them that predate their first meeting and also start to cast a shadow of doubt over Shan Wei's true identity. There's a lot more I want to say about the book, but I'll just leave that as my summary. I love this book so much and it was a five star read for me. In fact, if I could rate it higher, I would. So I read the first installation of Chapeau Long, another work of the authors earlier in the year, and I found it kind of slow, but ultimately decided to give the next one to two installations in the series a try before release, solidifying my impression of the series and Priest as well. I also knew Guardian was coming out this year, so I wanted to give another work of the authors a try, and I'm delighted that I did. Guardian was definitely a more enjoyable for me than Chapeau Long was, but after reading the first volumes of both series, I've come to develop a deep appreciation for Priest's range and writing. Guardian and Chapeau Long are two completely different subgenres. I think Dame is still the genre, but both are extremely well written and the world building in them is very creative. So in Chapeau Long, you had a steampunk subgenre with what seems like an Asian China setting. But Guardian has a supernatural fantasy-esque subgenre in a murder setting and these are two genres I absolutely love. Like I grew up reading a lot of fantasy and sci-fi so I was automatically drawn in by the plot of both series. But another thing that's worth mentioning is how the subgenre and the themes in both series almost seem like a mismatch if you're just thinking about it logically but it's been written in a way that just really worked for both of them. And what I mean by that is how when I think of steampunk how it was written in Chapeau Long. It almost feels like it will work better in a modern or futuristic setting. And similarly for a story with fantasy themes dealing with Chinese mythology, it feels like it will go well with an ancient China setting, but they've been swapped and they just worked really well in a way that made both series unique. I really enjoyed how much Guardian explored topics of um, Chinese mythology like reincarnation and the three realms and the back of the book has the glossary come on to seven seas dame releases which are excellent research material for someone who loves to learn about beliefs in other cultures so that setting alone was already doing a lot for me but the plot was great too and i got very invested in it as well as the characters even the characters that felt like side characters so starting with uh the two main characters Zhao Yunlan was a confident, witty, and charming character with a lot of reads, as people say these days. And we can't forget that he's a bisexual icon who is supposedly meant to be mainly a top, but I know that Sean Wei pulls an Uno reverse card on him in the bedroom because I sometimes get too curious and spoil things like this for myself. 
I actually really like that dynamic in BL couples when someone who supposedly only tops meets someone who makes him consider otherwise. And as confident as he was with his ability to pull both genders, I like the fact that he immediately gave up his shameless and persistent pursuits the moment Shen Wei told him he wasn't interested. Up to that point, Zhao Yunlan was acting mainly on the assumption that the attraction between the both of them was mutual. There was a little bit of arrogance there as well, but this is what I mean when I say he's a lovable asshole. He was confident in his ability to bag Sean Wei until the moment Sean Wei told him, point blank period, I'm not interested, and he immediately backed up. Like, I really love that. I also really enjoyed his dynamic with all the employees in the special investigations department. He seemed to be well respected by them, but still had a playful and blunt rapport with all of them. He was also a really insightful character, like if you think you can pull a fast one on him, think again. He pieced the tiniest bits of information together really fast in the book, which makes sense for the job he does. He's an investigator after all, so that ability to think quickly and put info together is just par for the curse. And Sean Wei was a really mysterious character and you barely find out anything about him until like the end of the book, so there isn't a whole lot I can say about him. A lot of, of the scenes where he appeared just served to make the air of mystery around him even more intense, but he seemed to have this otherworldly vibe to him and other characteristics that just seemed inhuman and made it clear that he was a character that knew way more than he was letting on. So for side characters, the newbie Nepal baby hire, Chong Chong, is one of the two I want to talk about. He was a character that initially seemed inconsequential, but since the book opened up with his employment and he was present for the most part of the book, I think he's a side character that's there to say. He was introduced as a character who has a little bit of social anxiety and he isn't the best at relating with other people, which makes him look incompetent, but he's also a really kind boy. And I really love this character. There were a couple of times when it was mentioned that he has really good merits, which I guess is kind of good luck, and Zhao Yunlan joked about keeping him around as a lucky charm, so I think that's another hint that he'll be a consistent side character throughout the series. If you've read the entire thing and I'm wrong, please do not correct me. Thank you. But overall, I found his character really endearing, and I'm really rooting for him. I think he's, like, a, he's perfect for a great character development arc, and I just want to see him become confident and, uh, and a reliable employee of the Special Investigations Department. The other side character I wanted to mention is Li Xian, the student who was a person of interest in the murder investigation. Now this is a character that is actually just there for a portion of the book, and once the investigation was wrapped up, there was barely any mention of her name again. But the reason I'm bringing up this character is because she still had a story that was important. It left an impression on you and it tied nicely into the overall storyline in the book. So in her storyline alone, things like family, love, loss, and death were covered. So in this story, Lixian was born at a time when China had a very strict one-child policy and male children were also valued more than female children. So her family had her and another child who ended up being a boy, but because they didn't want to pay the, the fine for exceeding the policy limits, they basically treated her like she didn't exist and she was sent to the countryside to be raised by her grandmother which sounds like a great setup for a main character story to me so lishan was raised by her grandmother who was like the only family member she knew and the only one who showed her love so when her grandmother died lishan was distraught and she ended up doing something drastic like trying to use the reincarnation dial to bring her grandmother back by sacrificing a portion of her own life as I mentioned earlier, that triggered a prison break in the netherworld and eventually led to the death of the student whose murder was being investigated throughout the book. And even after the investigation got wrapped up, the reincarnation Dao tied into what is probably the main storyline of the series. The reincarnation Dao is one of four items known as the hallowed artifacts that, according to the book, serve as a seal tied to the balance of yin and yang and the six paths of reincarnation. Something like that is not meant to be in the mortal realm. Worse still, after Lixian used it, it went missing, so searching for it is now a part of the plot. And things get even more interesting when another one of these hallowed artifacts shows up towards the end of the book. So I just really enjoyed and appreciate how the story line of the investigation was tied into the main plot. It was beautifully written and I really appreciated that. 
there was also a character called Ling Jing, whose name I couldn't see without thinking of Jin Ling from Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation. They just sound really similar to me. Same thing with Chong Chong. He sounds like Chong Gong, the prince from Shapolong. They probably mean different things and have different characters in Chinese, but their romanization sounds really, really similar. The last thing I want to go over is the live action of the series. I know one came out back in 2018. And if you look it up, the Wikipedia for the live action mentions. Though the novel depicts the relationship as romantic in nature, the web series depicts the relationship as a platonic friendship with homoerotic subjects in response to Chinese laws prohibiting depictions of same-sex relationships on television. So me being aware of Chinese censorship, I really wanted to see just how they planned to depict the very palpable sexual tension between Zhao Yunlan and Xiao Wei as platonic, you know, for research purposes. So to that end, I was going to watch live action, and since I'm following the series as the physical books are released, I was thinking to myself that I'll just watch until about where the book stops, expecting that it was adapted pretty much the same way the novel was written, but I ended up spoiling a portion of the story for myself just by watching like the first 15 seconds of the trailer. I didn't even make it to the second episode because the first one had flashbacks that weren't covered in the first book, so I just gave up on watching it. I think the fact that it wasn't adapted exactly like the novel shows familiarity with the source material and the knowledge of that material was modified into a story that's more intriguing in a viewable medium which is cool overall um this is the most exciting first installation i've read in the dame genre all year it had everything i like in a series like fantasy with a mix of chinese mythology great character writing a plot that keeps you invested and just that overall excitement that comes with finding a series you automatically know you're going to enjoy i cannot wait for the second volume which will be released in february of 2024 that feels very far away but i'll be looking forward to it if you read this first volume of the series or you're already familiar with the entire thing feel free to drop a comment on what you enjoy about priest writing and if you haven't read it i hope this video convinced you to do so whatever day you find yourself watching this make it a great one and i will see you in my next video bye